<clears throat> is the combination of glycerin and glycolic acid novel? I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I will not dignify <laughs> that question with a response. <laughs> We're back. Welcome to the Chemist Confessions podcast, a human conversation on all the skincare science we talk about. I'm Victoria. I'm Gloria. And today we are decoding cleanser claims. Oh, um, <laughs> it'll be okay. <laughs> we, got, we got the sunscreen and the acne out of the way, so I think this one will be okay. You're right. You're right. But first, how about a brand update? Well, first things first, uh, you might have uh, you might have seen a lot more sunscreen content on our Instagram. Mm. It's because for the month of May, we're doing a 30 day 30 sunscreen challenge mm. where Victoria and I trial a bunch of sunscreens to see how they wear, how they uh, may be washed off by our blank slate. And just like a general primer for everyone, if you're on the market to look for a sunscreen. And you might see if you're watching this on YouTube, you might notice that my eyes are kind of red. It is because I tried the worst sunscreen for me. It's super slippery and it runs into your eye very easily. Mm. And I'm like squinting and winking at Victoria <laughs> for the past hour. Yeah, Gloria is going to power through. We have at this point trialed a few sunscreens already. Oh, well, I'll go first. <laughs> In terms of findings, um, I thought it's been actually, despite the number of sunscreens that we've tried, I still feel like every year I learn something. Um, one thing that I learned was this year, for some reason, I really suck at removing sunscreen or like washing sunscreen from my eye area <laughs> because in the sunscreener, I kind of look like I've got like post drinking acne. Uh, eyeliner going on um, in the sunscreener, which was fascinating. And then the other thing was, it's been really interesting just seeing how sunscreen wears after the day, even mm -hmm. after reapplication. It's shocking that it does not stay on. Yeah, it actually does. Uh, it does showcase that even just you, you don't think you're doing much, you're sitting there on your computer. Yeah, it's definitely still wearing off just by you existing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Gloria actually even trialed some sunscreens in Taiwan during yeah. her trip there. Yeah, I recently got the chance to go back. And of course, I brought the sunscreener with yeah. me and wanted to trial it in a very humid environment. Yeah. And I want to just tell everyone that humidity is the sunscreen killer. It is mm -hmm. awful. And even something that I will we'll have a comparison video done by then. Uh, by the time this episode comes out, I trialed Evie's um, UV mousse in Taiwan and also here in LA where it's a lot less humid yeah. and the difference is striking. So definitely we'll be testing out one of the classic Japanese sunscreens, Anessa, that specifically claims that it's resistant to environmental humidity. We'll see. We'll see how that goes because <laughs> you know, it doesn't... It, the thing is like you kind of know that humidity won't, won't be a positive impact. But for me, it was shocking how bad it was. Yeah. I was out running errands for like 45 minutes, an hour maybe. Totally. So way under the recommended use time. And it was the wear and tear was already very, very obvious. Totally. Yeah. So if you're interested in all of our learnings, our journey of 30 day, 30 sunscreen challenge, definitely check it out on our Instagram and TikTok. Um, but otherwise, in terms of other brand news, what exactly are we working on, Gloria? What have we been up to? Oh, man. Um, well, we've been up to you. We've been working on a lot. You are going to start to notice some changes on our website. It's because Yee! we've been hard at work trying to make the website much better. We are hoping that it should be easier for you guys to find content on there. In terms of all the work that we do, it should be much better organized on the new website. But as any new website work, it almost feels like we were starting from scratch. I, our developer was asking me for product info and they're like, what goes here? I'm like, good question. I need to, I, I need to make that. Oh, what picture go there? Uh, we need to take that picture. <laughs> there were just so many little things, but yeah, you will get a sneak peek of the new design coming through if you're subscribed to our email list, yeah. but we hope everyone likes it. We really enjoyed it. And I think we were 
due for a bit of a facelift. Totally. It is definitely time. Um, this bootstrap brand, obviously, when we first started, um, we did all those designs on our own. So, and it's gone through a one other iteration before this one. So yeah, it's it's definitely time to actually get some professional help. Yes. <laughs> Next formulas that we may or may not be working on i know so if you asked us are we working on other gen 2 formulas the answer is yes um which ones might be A the few. bomb <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we working on any new formulas the answer is yes uh when We'll be able to say anything. I don't know. <laughs> I, I fear the Mr. Reliable 2.0 curse. Yes, if yes. we say too much too early, it's going to, something's going to come over. Like, oh, damn it. Yeah. So just so you know, yes, we're also, we've been in the lab um, cooking up some really exciting uh, new revamps and then even just new formulas and stay tuned. I am super excited about the Bomb 2.0. Uh, we am very, very happy with the direction this went in. And hopefully it will, it will, it's definitely coming fall, right? Like, yeah. 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 You, you just said Bomb no season? timelines. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Timeline. Yeah. 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 Nice. Fall. I yeah, like fall. it. Mm. It makes sense. Cool. <laughs> Anyways, uh, aside from that, if you are interested in any of our skincare products as a thank you to all our podcast viewers and listeners, please use the promo code CC podcast 2023 for 15% off your first order. But otherwise, it's time for us to get into the news. In the news. It's a slow news cycle. <laughs> I think it's because we're starting to head into warmer months and I always feel like this is how it goes. I almost feel like it's trends of the year. Silence. <laughs> Sunscreen's killing you. And then bam, <laughs> holiday bundles. <laughs> yep, yep, that's absolutely, yes, that makes a lot of sense. So in terms of the news, Cody is launching an internal metaverse. That's the news. Cool. <laughs> wow. Uh, it seems like they're trying to gamify the workplace. This virtual campus will, uh, basically, they want to connect their global workforce to empower future innovation for Cody's broad portfolio of brands. Cool. Um, they'll integrate tools such as text and vocal chat discussions, screen and file sharing, and customizable avatars. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you think about it, you're like, I'm pretty sure we could do all of that without a metaverse. Probably, mm. but in the metaverse world, uh, the word metaverse is so in. Mm. That's right. why you gotta call it a metaverse. But also, don't you feel like it's like, watch it like a, a year late? <laughs> I was also gonna say, watch it just be Microsoft SharePoint. <laughs> <laughs> like SharePoint with an avatar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can share files, you can chat. What else do you want, man? <laughs> well, they say the first. this will be the first metaverse to game of high global collaboration and engagement through a fidgetal. I hate that one so much. It's, it's also like, ooh, a fidgetal. Like, ooh. A fidgetal uh, reward system based on item collection, location exploration, and quest fulfillment. You're making your job an RPG? <laughs> like here, I, I found a potion and I will share with my French colleagues to unlock a badge. <laughs> like, is, that, is that how that's going to work? I mean could be fun actually i'm i'm kind of curious i can i can i can see it being interesting like mm -hmm. a way to incentivize certain behaviors like i don't know like sometimes i find that when we were in the big corporation side with l'oreal the amount of knowledge and formula history yeah. that's accumulated by a huge company like l'oreal or a cody is immense right it's very hard for you to really even find everything that is available for you. No, that's totally true. And you often get siloed. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So this might be a really interesting way to um to bridge bridge that gap or kind of incentivize people to go out of their silo area and do this. But I will say a lot of like good corporate intentions turn into like some sort of like comedic episode <laughs> in execution. So if She's you, not wrong. If you're a coding employee, let us know how the yeah. metaverse is treating you. That would be great. And 
we're going to continue with that type of news because Nyx also announces their NFT collection. <laughs> Are we still doing NFTs? I'm telling you. You know what? I know we're behind. Oh I know God. Nyx is already behind too. But we need to NFT fight the bubble guys. Yeah, actually. Oh. Yeah. 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 They'll be worth like a penny, but it's fine. Yes. At least it'll buzz if we have NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's confession is entering the NFT world. Hey! <laughs> uh, so in terms of Nick's uh, NFT collection, the brand recruited Team Alpha, which is a roster of nine artists based on their talents and exceptional expertise and global impact on the 3D avatar community to create 4,150 oh, wow. unique NFTs for Dream Vortex. Whoa, that is a lot more than I thought. I yeah. thought it would be like three. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. And I believe the collection is called Dream Vortex. And mm -hmm. this is the first opportunity for these artists to experiment and shape the direction of beauty in the metaverse. Um, yeah. What? <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, I, I will say, and then let me show Gloria some of the art. Mm -hmm. Um. I weirdly, if you take out NFT, mm -hmm. I don't actually hate this because I do think the looks are actually quite cool to look at. They're very and, futuristic. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, if you think about makeup artists and who comes out with the first look mm -hmm. and kind of putting your mark and your signature on it, there's not really a good way of doing that. And mm -hmm. I kind of feel like oh that is a good way to give credit to some of these like especially more avant-garde more edgy more cutting edge looks i feel like but yeah it's very interesting kind of interesting right yeah so anyways nix's nfts you can look forward to that and then in terms of product launches we did um want to call out glossier's new lip product their mm. g suit because it's definitely g for glossier Okay. <laughs> I have no clue. I have no idea how they came up with this. So cool. G suit. Yeah. I keep wanting to say G suite. Yes, like the Google I was, suite. That's, that's, oh my. That's exactly what I was like. I was like, oh, cool. G suite. No, it, there's no E. <laughs> it's so confusing. <laughs> yes, exactly. But we're going to look into this because um, I think it's a good example of the skinification of makeup oh. that continues to happen. So, Gloria. What do you think of their I.L.? All right. I'm going to read the ingredients for everyone real fast. Mm. It goes capcat triglyceride, dimethicone, synthetic wax, blah, 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 hectorite, <laughs> yeah, seroconium hectorite, dimethicone, vinyl dimethicone cross polymer, polyphenol sesquioxane, propylene carbonate, silica, shea butter, olive oil, oil tocopher acetate, and I'm going to cut off here. Um... Just because under under that, I wouldn't expect any of the levels to be very significant. Yeah. Um. What do I think of that? I find the claim that it's skinifying to be a little bit of a stretch. Oh, okay. I think it's like a to me. I, <laughs> it seems like a standard lip gloss mm. formula. I don't see anything super shocking. Or very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think, um, I guess for me, I would say that after looking at a lot of lip glosses recently, mm. um, we don't see those typical like isobutines yeah, or those yeah. film formers that we're used to. All of these, for the most part, are things you'll probably find in skincare. So I feel like they're definitely pushing towards like, more IL recognizable ingredients. I guess I so. Like. Yeah. Um. I, I think for me, like here, I I would be. I haven't used this, so I can't say for sure mm -hmm. one way or another. But to me, as a color, it, it looks like it's a pretty pigmented product. Mm -hmm. Yes. I very true. would be mildly concerned about it running or bleeding. Yes, I I would love to know too. It's very new, so for those of you that are able to try it, do let us know. Also, I would like to say Matt is now coming back because it's we, it's the we deep read, demi matte finish. We wrote that. I think we went through that cycle really fast. It was like really in, then it's it not. It was when and we like, left L'Oreal. Yeah, that Matt was on its way out. Mm -hmm. So, and Matt we're back. back. Yay! <laughs> I guess. 
Yeah. So anyways, yeah, do let us know. But it's definitely one of the newer lip products. And honestly, makeup is back. Everyone's out there now. And so I feel like there's definitely a lot more makeup launches that are coming out. So definitely more to come. We'll keep an eye out. Yeah. All right. And the last piece of news is... I think I'm starting to really like some of these surveys that are coming out. They're mm-hmm. very entertaining. <laughs> um, and so I definitely felt like I had to share this with Gloria. This is actually a survey on men and their skincare habits. So this survey actually looked at 2,000 men between the ages of 18 to 26. They wanted to discover men's habits and attitudes towards skincare. And there's some really fascinating insights. So one key insight was that 42% of men claimed they needed someone to confront them about their skincare regimen Comfort- before they would get into skincare. What a word. Like, I need an intervention. Mm-hmm. Bro, listen, you really need sunscreen. Yeah, exactly. So they need an intervention. Also, according to the report, 42% of men first started practicing skincare between the ages of 15 to 17, but only 35% whoa, whoa. washed their face. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was about to, I was nodding along like, well, mm-hmm, that makes sense. Like, that's acne time and, yeah. you know, men are more prone yeah. to yeah. acne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought step one is washing your face if you have breakouts. What? Yeah. 35%. Yeah. I, I don't know. Bar is not high. They don't feel like their face is dirty. Well, I feel like just last episode or a couple episodes ago, we we're talking about how, like, oh, we're curious at like Gen Z nowadays because this survey yes. is on very young yeah. men. Like, they must have much better skincare habits than we do, this and that. There are only a third of you even washing your face. Yeah. Wow. And get this, 19% moisturize, which I feel like fair because I feel like you and I struggle to even get our husbands to moisturize. Yes, that's true. 33% have no skincare routine at all, mm. which means they wake up, they brush their teeth, they go to work or they do their hair and go to work, mm. go to school. Yeah, crazy. Wear sunscreen, guys. <laughs> and then also, they also write, and this is a, I quote them, when begging the question of what sparked an interest in the need for a skincare routine, the survey found that 50% of men were influenced by a first date and 48% by their first job. <laughs> <laughs> I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Though I'm still, I'm still marveling at, at the 35% wash your face quote because I'm like, I thought like men don't like topicals, but I thought like a, a, a lot of them, if they have acne, the first thing they turn yeah. to is a cell as a wash of yeah. some sort. Bro, at least wash your face. <laughs> it's just hard to get them to put anything on their face, oh my I God. guess. Yeah. Um, this is also kind of fun. Half of the men polled reported they would rather go on a bad date or a doctor's appointment then practice a skincare regimen. Wow. <laughs> 45% of men even prefer to clean out their email inbox. 41% would do their laundry by hand for a month, then take care of their skin. Oh, I, I need to see a copy of the survey. Like, how are they phrasing I this? don't know. Like, yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm so curious, but I'm like, clearly they don't like skincare. <laughs> One out of two men don't care about skincare and what happened wait, wait, wait. and who came up with this list like would you rather hey quick uh come up with something that people yeah. don't like what do. if people hate doing wash dishes <laughs> clear clear my inbox <laughs> it feels like a very random list of things of would you rather yeah exactly laundry by hand <laughs> that is a very random one exactly survey also revealed that 76 percent of men in relationships Slowly use more of their significant other's personal care Can't products. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's very accurate. Mm-hmm. These products include hair, shampoo, conditioner, moisturizer, cleanser. Finally. <laughs> 71% of men are more likely to borrow their partner's skincare products than purchase their own. Can't confirm. My husband has this very annoying habit. Not habit, this pet peeve of his. He hates keeping bottles in the shower. And I after and, and I agree, I used to have like many, many bottles of shampoos I trialed and the ones that don't work out kind of sit there for a while. So I agree that's a little cluttery. 
But I think it's very reasonable to have like more like maybe two shampoos or something, whatever, or two conditioners. Yeah, I think that's fair. He hates it. He only wants one. But our problem is that he has really oily skin and scalp, and yeah. I have really dry everything. So I don't, I don't like using products that he used. And he'll complain about how like. Um, babe, I think your conditioner is too greasy. No one asked you to use it. Just get your own. Like, I, holy crap. No, it's fair. Adam and I have our, own, our separate ones. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah. And we, he's the one with a dry scalp. Yes. So I usually have my own, uh, my separate one now, yeah. but he's still like, like, just mumbling around, like, kind of like, oh, I don't understand why we need two shampoos, babe. Like, but also. <laughs> yeah. But yes. He would rather steal mine and complain about it than get his own anything. There you go. The most common questions I get when he's in the bathroom is like, Oh, babe, where's your cleanser? I'm like, get your own cleanser. Also, this makes me kind of feel for men's skincare. <laughs> like, yeah. Men's skincare brands. Like, well, clearly you're still, you know, catering to the female shopper. Don't you feel like when we were getting into the industry some 10 years ago now, um, men's skincare was some hot new frontier yes. thing. They're like, oh, yes, we're going to crack the code to mm -hmm. men's skincare. It's going to be great. There's so many untapped audience here. And here we are some 10 <laughs> years later. People are still like... I'd rather clear out their inbox. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah. And also, I thought this was one last stat here is um, they say, as for possible reasoning for this lack of skincare usage, 21% of men reported that they don't know what ingredients to shop for. You got to start with washing <laughs> your face before you get into ingredient decoding. Yeah. And 17% said there are too many products to choose from. That I can understand. But, I mean, 21%, 17%, that's not really the majority. I, I'd just like to know about the majority of those that they're reasoning. I, feel I like guess it's the inbox people. Yeah, they're like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, that's the male skincare user for you. You know, I will say, I think, like, I can understand the too many products thing. I, I really like men's body wash. Mm-hmm. Cause I kind of like the minty stuff. I kind of like the cedar smelling body wash once it's in a while. It's not too floral and sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not as extreme as like the Axe body wash, but like maybe like an even an Old Spice sure. once in a while. I think it smells really nice. But I think the men's category, the whole bracket, suffers from like death by choices, but it's death by choices of a lot of the same things. Yeah, <laughs> It's like same log cabin crap. <laughs> <laughs> how many cedar yeah, bottles? How many can you have? lumberjack brands can yeah. you come out with? How many combos of mint and wood can one have? <laughs> no, that's so true. Yeah, they all I think if you best best example is to go down a target aisle. Mm -hmm. They're all in the amber dark bottles. Yeah. They all smell kind of similar. You got your pine stuff, your smoky stuff, and it's all like Ugh, like man font. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. So I'm like, man. And I wonder because I think, um, I do think around like my friend circle and also based on this survey, it's very true that a lot of dudes would rather like if they have a girlfriend, the girlfriend shops yeah. for them, right? Yeah, or totally. they just use their skincare. Totally. So sometimes I look at the target aisles and my like, Marketing to me, because there's no way in hell my husband's ever even taking like taking a closer look at this aisle. No, totally. And I will say, of all the categories that I feel like, from what I learned from Adam, that they're particular about is deodorant. Anything oh, else mm -hmm. does not matter. Mm. Yeah, hair care, skin care, beard care. Meh, they'll just use whatever. But deodorant is the thing that they know what mm -hmm. they need. Yeah, that's a good point. I know some men who have more facial hair than my husband. I call him. He has whiskers. He doesn't have a whole beard. <laughs> but I know they can get particular about like shaving products oh, too, yeah, and that's yeah. like kinda, after shave. That's yeah, true. like yeah. that's kind of how moisturizers no, get it in. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a really <laughs> good disguising point. Disguising itself as aftershave. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, interesting. Yeah. Interesting stats. Anyways, that's the news. We're gonna move on to decoding that claim. All right. And if you think about cleanser claims, you're probably like, what claims? Which is also very fair. Yes. So we kind of broke down the, we're talking about cleanser claims. Mm. 
Victoria's right. They're few and far in between. So what we'll do is almost treat this section as a shopping guide and what claims you should look for <laughs> uh, in this category. So first things first, you might see cleansing claims that's based on self-perception uh, self perception studies. I find this to be very interesting because I know like we talk about we uh we talk about products with studies come with a lot more kudos from us like we think it's worthy of a try but this is a category where i i still find it kind of difficult to have takeaways from yes so we which pull- is why we don't always like talking about cleansers <laughs> yeah because you'll see claims from so for example skin fix has a barrier plus foaming oil hydrating cleanser i have actually used this product quite mm. a few times i enjoy it but this, at least on me, I kind of like double cleansing with it because yes. it still, it it's, it has a finish. It still has a, a it doesn't a give you that um soup. cleaner finish that regular cleansers do. Yeah. Yes, I but agree with that. It is very gentle and mm. it has a stat that says clinically proven to reduce visible retinas with an asterisk and 96% felt skin was clean, cleaner, soft and fresh. Or clean, soft, and fresh. <laughs> and the little asterisk says, in a 28-day dermatologist-led clinical study based on colorimeter reading, so the retinas claims from uh, an instrumental study, and the uh, the claim of 96% agree was based on the same, mm. or a 28-day dermatologist-led consumer perception study. Mm. I... It's hard for me to have a takeaway, right? Like, I have personally used this product. Uh, I'm not someone that's super-duper retinas-prone, um, so I can't say much about the visible reduction of redness but i find it strange that it's instrumentally measured but it says clinically proven with a before after picture that does look kind of impressive as an overnight picture but no stats mm-hmm. attached to it if it has like how much reduction yeah and wait how many people was in that study it was not immediately clear to us based on the stats yeah, right. totally fair. And I think this is where I I feel like Gloria and I have existential questions on cleanser claims because mm-hmm. we always know that cleanser is the start of the routine mm-hmm. where you're going to put other things after. Yep. So how beneficial is it to purchase based on the claim yep. is kind of like it can be subjective. And I feel like, and I don't know, Gloria, if you agree or not, is that like, I feel like cleanser claims can be helpful specifically for compromised skin. Right. But anything more is kind of like, well, it's okay. No, exactly that. I I totally agree. And so based on the skin fix cleanser, it showed a BNA of a redness, a really significant redness reduction overnight Mm -hmm. from this cleanser. Again, we don't have more insights into the study, so we don't know what they're using in their routine after the cleansing. So the... Kind of the key takeaway here isn't necessarily that this could be a redness treatment. It's more like if you're prone to redness, if you have a compromised skin barrier, this is struggle with cleansers. Yes, this is probably a lot less likely to irritate and exacerbate your skin problem. Totally, that's it. So I think in this in this particular case, helpful but not the end all be all. We'll place this above another quote unquote gentle cleanser that may not have that BNA, but yeah, mm. yeah. And also, it's for redness. It's not like they looked at dryness any sort of i don't know stinging tightness feel so right. it's specifically for that claim i also find the consumer perception study kind of interesting and i'll, I'll, I'll compare it with the next cleansing uh, cleanser that we're going to talk about which is the elements cleansing balm mm-hmm. this is a very very popular one so a lot of you have probably tried it uh, so in this cleansing balm they did a independent user trial uh, based on 45 pe- uh, 54 people, 45, 54 <laughs> people over two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah, actually. Long. And 54 Usually it's people. Like three days yeah. overnight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's actually a pretty sizable study mm. for a pretty long time for a cleanser study. So kudos there. It is a, they call it clinical results, but it is a consumer perception study. <laughs> Uh, it says 96% of the user felt that the product helped leave their skin feeling softened and soothed. That is a very weirdly constructed sentence. <laughs> felt the product helped leave their skin feeling softened. Feeling softened. It feels like we're sweet. dancing. There's or... a lot of operate, operative words here. But um, 94% of the users agreed that the product helped leave their skin feeling clean. That's 
help leave help leave yeah. their feeling clean cool yeah. <laughs> and then 90 percent felt the product was effective at removing makeup hmm. so like kind of comparing it with the skin fix one i kind of find it interesting that they only quoted one claim from the mm. consumer perception study that skin fix did because usually you sent them like a long yes. long survey usually a whole sheet yeah and see where that goes so interesting they just want to focus on the gentle part right exactly but for this one i find it interesting usually i would be like yeah more claims better or more more (laughs) claims more info right but i would actually kind of weigh the uh, the skin fix claim a little bit more just uh, actually i wouldn't wait i would actually weigh them the exact same because i don't know what the takeaway is you know what's funny is you're absolutely right because when you told me that i realized i've like nothing yeah you're like feeling yeah it's like oh okay yeah it's like great cleans <laughs> yeah i don't know what the takeaway is because again this is an impressive size and yeah, investment no, it's true for a cleansing balm but i am not sure if this would convince me to buy this balm over another one uh, <clears throat> after looking at the price tag of illness's cleansing balm i can confirm i will not purchase this <laughs> Very expensive. It is a very expensive <laughs> cleansing balm. And I think for me, it's just like in terms of a cleansing balm, what I look for is mm. not any of the things that they just clean, right? Like it, it leaves the skin. Just the feel makeup, like a, probably, right? The removing makeup one. Yeah. And again, like this one for makeup removability, I will just try it. Does it work for my makeup, right? Because mm. everyone's makeup routine is very, very different. So how well does it remove my makeup is the only thing I would consider. So saying that 90% of it, 90% of the users agree, doesn't really do much for me. Yeah. And um, basically, we said we had existential questions and yeah. you're really just hearing our thought process <laughs> as we talk about cleansers is like, I think we always go back to cleansers are probably the the most personal of of products in Mm. that why you would ask someone, why do you like it? And it's like finish, fragrance, like how it feels when you wash. These are all super personal. And so I think knowing all this, this is why Lori and I are kind of like where claims here most of them are actually not that helpful in making a shopping decision. Yeah. So yeah. I guess the long story short takeaway from this category is if you have compromised skin, some data there, if a cleanser has been tested specifically on skin that's yeah. brand that's prone or whatever else, that's helpful. Yeah. But other than that, eh. Yeah. All right. But and cleansers with actives? Um, there's another question we get a lot. Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah's cleanser claims that it's anti-aging. What's it your take? What do you oh, think? Oh, it's rich in <laughs> vitamin <laughs> A. <laughs> <laughs> um, we usually poo-poo on those a lot, but <laughs> we took a cl- closer look at the product landscape. So first of all, if it's anti-aging, we'll say ignore those completely or even brightening or hyperpigmentation claims. You are not going to cure hyperpigmentation with a cleanser or have like meaningful wrinkle reduction from a cleanser. You're Sorry. just not. Yeah, take that with a grain of salt <laughs> and then move on. But another very popular category of cleanser with mm. active ingredients is exfoliating cleansers. Mm. We covered it a little bit in the acne cat uh, acne episode last week mm. on BHA cleansers, but a lot of times you'll also look, see glycolic acid cleansers. So to highlight whether or not we think highly of this category, we'll take a closer look at two skin circles cleansers. Ooh, I love it. Head to head. Yes. Uh, their purifying cleanser and their glycolic renewal cleanser. Let's do it. So the purifying cleanser, I would position this as a, a more typical type of quote-unquote AHA cleanser you will mm. see. The claim reads, Skin Circles Purifying Cleanser combines glycolic acid and glycerin to simultaneously remove impurities and hydrate the skin. This cleansing gel delivers mild foaming action and redefine to refine a dull and uneven complexion while replenishing hydration, leaving skin feeling refreshed, renewed, and conditioned. And the key ingredient call out is obviously glycolic acid. It's derived from sugar cane. This AHA helps facilitate skin's natural exfoliation while eliminating dead skin cell buildup. Yada 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 yada. You'll see these claims based on the ingredient, right? Like, yes, Victoria. <clears throat> Is the combination of glycerin and glycolic acid novel? 
I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I will not dignify that question with a response. Um, I, huh. um. That's a, that's the first time I've actually heard them tout the blend of glycolic and glycerin. Yeah, I don't really know what's oh, going on here. Me. But it, it calls out cool. glycolic acid. <laughs> But you will know the key difference here compared to a lot of other HA products is like this uh, Skin Circles is a brand that prides itself on clinical tests. Correct. But this is not done for the cleanser. So any exfoliation mm. claims is writing on the existence of glycolic acid rather than this formula. Like we said in acne claims. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you look at ingredients. Ta -da! Where is the glycolic acid, Victoria? Uh, <clears throat> so I read water. Propylene glycol, PEG 30 glycerol cocoate, caprol capromido propyl betaine, glycerin, uh, disodium laurisulfate. We're going cocoa betaine, sodium chloride, xanthan gum, gly oh what? <laughs> glycolic acid. And uh, that's definitely not at any meaningful level. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's right before uh, the phenoxyethanol under the xanthan gum. This should be flamed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not jumping the gun to flame this ingredient, uh, this product yet. Um, so yeah, it's not in there at an exfoliating level at all. If this is over 1%, I will be shocked. You know, I, I highly doubt it's even over 0.5. But yes. So it's a cleanser. So it's a cleanser <laughs> with some level of glycolic acid. Uh, we'll take a closer look at another cleanser, also in the SkinCeutical line. This is their glycolic renewal um, purifying cleanser, or gel cleanser. I threw in the purifying for <laughs> as a bonus. Purifying is the first cleanser. <laughs> this is just glycolic renewal. Yes. So the product description goes, glycolic renewal gel cleanser from SkinCeuticals powerfully cleanses your skin remo- Skin Someone removing. add a comma to this description. <laughs> <laughs> Cleanses your skin, comma, removing impurities, dirt, oil, and long wear makeup without stripping the skin of moisture. Formulated with glycolic and phytic acids, mm. this gel cleanser gently dissolves dead skin cells, resulting in a brighter, smoother, and clearer complexion. Mm. Refreshing LO, blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that. Uh, <laughs> but basically, a very, very similar sounding description. But the key difference is it called out the percentages. Mm. This cleanser has 8% glycolic acid, 1% mm -hmm. phytic acid, and the 2% aloe leaf extract. That Gloria doesn't care about. Whatever. Um, <laughs> so, Victoria, how do we feel about this compared to the other cleanser? And should people use this over the other one? Uh, well, worthy of the glycolic gel cleanser claim, I'll, I would say. So if you're looking for exfoliation, yes, this would definitely be the right option. But if you're not looking for exfoliation, then yes, I guess you can use the purifying cleanser. That's just fine. It's just a regular cleanser. Yeah. So when we were doing research and I found these two products and I was just thinking to myself, like, I have a hard time with this category. I know people really like having a, a little bit of exfoliating power mm. in their cleanser, but in terms of routine building, I'm like, okay, I see you skin circles. You have a cleanser that has enough glycolic acid to do mm. something, right? But what does it replace? I would say, like, if you have a, let's say you have a gold standard from our line as a once a week rinse off mask, this might be able, might be enough um, as a daily supplement. Mm. It could potentially replace a, say, a lower level exfoliating toner. Mm. But it's, as a rinse off product, it won't be, it won't replace like a higher level daily serum. Mm. It definitely won't replace your leave all, your rinse off product, like a, a peel mask. So it kind of is like, all right, it's, it kind of depends on your routine, whether or not this is helpful. So I think Gloria and I came to the conclusion that you would use an AHA cleanser, a higher level AHA cleanser, mm -hmm. if you have too many toners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you are one that maybe, let's say, has, you use a bunch of the ordinary amp, uh, droppers, you know, and or you've got your, um, you've got a toner that you like and you want like a more gentle amount, like let's say, I really would like to use the Pixie Glow Tonic glycolic acid, but I have four toners that I'm already using or four steps and I just can't fit it in. Maybe then I feel like 
it would make sense that you could get your exfoliant through this format. Um, I feel like that's the case where I, that would make sense to me. Um, if you're not like obviously acne is separate, but yeah. So the quick takeaway from this whole rant about this category is <laughs> if you're worried about over exfoliating with a with a AHA cleanser, mm. it's very unlikely. Yeah. They're usually and but if you're looking to replace your AHAs yeah. with a cleanser, it's also not very likely. So yeah, it could help true. boost your routine a mm. little bit, but I, we wouldn't look to this category as like your main chemical exfoliant. I did think about one caveat. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes 2% cell acid is way too much for acne, Mm -hmm. for anybody. Like, it can be just too much, but people think 2% is what I need to work. You actually don't need that much, but, you know. So I was thinking, well, in that case, that's why 2% cell acid cleansers can be very helpful because it's it's gentler format, gentler introduction. So I would say that's probably the only one where I'm like, sometimes the cleanser actually might be better than the topical. That is true. So yes, consider that, but don't don't throw out your glycolic acid serums. Totally. Otherwise, purifying cleanser, I realize you need talking points to talk about. So you called out glycolic acid, but why? (laughs) I don't get it. Why? Why? Why did you do that? All right. All right. Uh, next claim. Uh, the third category of claim slash product types that I didn't, we didn't really know what to do with <laughs> is you will hear a lot of hydrating claims. Mm. Like this is gentle, will mm. strip your skin barrier. CeraVe straight up called it their hydrating cleanser. Mm. So how much weight should we <laughs> give these names or product descriptions that yeah. imply that a cleanser is hydrating? I mean, to be fair, in the supplier world, they'll actually do hydrating studies on their cleansing surfactants to give brands an idea of like how not stripping Mm -hmm. it is. And again, I think this is the same category as the redness claim. Mm -hmm. It's like great for compromised skin, but we all know we're going to be putting a moisturizer on after cleansing. Mm -hmm. So not super helpful i would say to me yeah i agree and i will say i haven't i didn't find a single product that comes with actual clinicals in this category which is ironic because i i think in all the other categories we talked about i didn't even though they don't have clinical studies i wasn't expecting one either like we said like in some cases not super duper helpful but this is one where I feel like some measurements would be really helpful. So if you measure skin hydration after cleansing or your skin mm-hmm. hydration level after using the same cleanser for, say, two weeks versus a standard one, do you see a better yeah. improvement? I don't see anyone doing those kind of studies. It could be because it's really hard to hit those claims. But I would say just take the word hydration with a grain of salt. Yeah, totally agree. Otherwise, I do have one final thing I feel like we should talk about, and that's the price of cleansers. Because I feel like it is so wild how cheap you can get a cleanser and also how expensive a cleanser could be, like the Elemis cleansing balm. So, um, yeah, Gloria, any thoughts there? I think for me, that's definitely a category where I refuse to spend over, like... I think the most expensive cleanser I bought myself is like a maybe a $40, $40 cleansing balm. I will say balms are tend to be a little bit more expensive. Yeah. But if you're talking about like a gel cleanser, a daily like daily cleanser type, I wouldn't spend more than 25 to 30 Yeah, totally. In the cleanser meat, we'll, we'll talk about the types of surfactants you'll find, the evolution of some of these surfactants so sometimes that does add to the cost but otherwise yeah it's it's kind of wild um looking at this in fact gloria found a cleanser that's priced at 75 dollars that she would love to share um it's by the brand revive it's a pretty popular high-end brand Mm. their cleanser clocks in at a whopping 75 dollars 
And I will just read the top couple of ingredients. It goes a lot of money. Water, muriatic acid, glycerin, potassium hydroxide, stearic acid. I'm just gonna stop right now. <laughs> it's a soap based cleanser. <laughs> Anytime you see sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide yeah. along with a blah 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 acid, blah 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 acid, like fatty acid plus a base. That's that's a classic soap formula. You can get something very similar for like. Like pennies, <laughs> I would not spend seventy five dollars on a cleanser. Yeah, but Gloria, they have ceramides and lantuan and all these plant extracts. Probably and... in there point zero one percent. Yeah, exactly. So we always say this is the category where you can totally save some money on. You don't need actives in this category because you are all those actives need to be left on for it to work. Mm. So. Yeah, you don't have to buy a seventy-five dollars soap-based cleanser. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, I think that wraps up decode that claim, Woo! decode that category. Kind of feels like mm -hmm. um, we are going to wrap this up with just a couple Q and A questions. Um, so the first question is: I was wondering, can zinc and <laughs> ibobenzone be used together? For example, applying a chemical sunscreen first, then a mineral over top for reapplication. Yeah. Oh, you want me to answer? <laughs> okay, I was waiting for you to start that. Ah, we typically don't recommend yeah. mixing sunscreen types. Yeah. In this particular case, reason being, avobenzone is notoriously finicky. Mm -hmm. There's a lot you can do. Uh, in fact, there's a lot you have to do when formulating a sunscreen with avobenzone to make sure that it stays stable and it, it stays, you know. Well, I already said that. Okay, to make sure that it stays stable and, and effective you know. <laughs> in the formula. But uh, especially for reapplication, uh, in this case, I am not super worried. Let's say, let's say because avobenzone will not render the zinc ineffective, right? You're just putting the zinc over it, or like you're reapplying with the zinc, assuming you're like reapplying after say two, three, four hours. You're starting with a more or less blank foundation. Not the worst thing possible. We have heard of people that want to layer, let's say, uh, an avobenzone product, or a chemical filter system. The and mineral then mineral foundation. Yeah, with a mineral foundation with SPF yeah. or with zinc as an SPF. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Yeah, that's actually that's my thing. Yeah, no, I totally agree. If you're reapplying and let's say you just change it up, um, you find a different sunscreen. That's totally fine. Um, so yeah, I think we're not too worried there. And then the second question is something that actually I feel like has been trending and probably filling everyone's um, social media feeds in terms of ads is, hi, can you talk about the Solo Wave? And the Solo Wave mm -hmm. is now the trending device. It kind of looks like a razor, mm -hmm. um, but it's actually using laser therapy um, and is kind of a, just like an anti-aging device. And I said we'd talk about it, so we're going to just do a really quick to touch on this. You can think of Solar Wave as very similar to the new face in that it looks promising and exciting. And one of the things I have to give Solar Wave credit for is they actually share the wavelengths of the red light that they use, mm -hmm. which Gloria and I have a very hard time finding sometimes for devices. Oh, and this is one of the reasons why we still think if you want to explore devices, this is where branding matters compared mm. to you can find a any device. Yeah. You can find a cheaper version on Amazon. You will probably find a knockoff of this device on Amazon for very like soon. $20 or something. Yeah. yeah. But this is why we wouldn't recommend doing that. Totally. And I appreciate how much they share on that. Because um, knowing that nanometer allows us to understand the wavelength, um, you it's very important on whether or not you're going to get those benefits. So in their words, they do promote that, you know, that wavelength allows you to get benefits in terms of collagen and fiber blast production, woo, uh, improved circulation, and a healthy inflammatory response. And I did find one paper, a Japanese paper, that did look at this wavelength um, mm. and did tie it to anti-aging benefits that um, basically want to fight photo damage. The only thing that I want to share is that only other thing, which they will not disclose, because why would they? 
is the amount of energy or power of that wavelength for how long Mm -hmm. Um, because for the japanese study it's definitely a clinical amount they actually only do this therapy i think the frequency is like once a week or something like that Mm -hmm. um so this is where we're kind of like laura and i always say clinical devices versus at home devices will always be two different tiers yeah yeah so there's that In the solo wave, they also have a feature where they also can do microcurrent therapy. They also share the amps that they use for that. And then I do like that, you know, it's kind of more of a, uh, they say it's, it it makes it described as more of a temporary um, feeling where it's kind of a mini workout where you're contouring, toning, you're kind of feeling that um, stinging that happens when you use microcurrent. Mm-hmm. And I think when Gloria and I use the new face, we that's definitely how we experience felt. that. Yeah. yeah. And then kind of that tightening effect that happens. So, anyways, I do want to say <laughs> in terms of Solo Wave, it's not the most expensive device. We would say that if you want to pamper yourself, splurge, and add kind of this fun me time uh, routine, um, not the worst to yeah. try. But yeah, I I always think for me uh, personally, my problem with home device is consistency. Yeah, I have a because you already know that it's at a much lower energy level than yeah. what you are getting in office. Yeah, you need to be that much more on it in terms of consistency to see the benefits. Yeah, in terms of my habits, because we travel a lot, yeah. we do or we don't have a set routine. Our day to day is very different, so it's hard for me to get in the mindset of. Okay, let me add one more thing yeah. to my skincare routine. Yeah. I remember with the when we tried the new face microcurrent device, I think Gore and I were like, okay, I'm gonna try it for a week, you try it for a week. <laughs> and we definitely weren't consistent with it. So we're just no. yeah. I think for yeah, definitely our type of diligence, just going in office is yeah. probably more uh better. But yeah. we're not everyone, obviously. Uh, other than that, that is the end of Decode That Cleanser um, in terms of where to find us. Yeah, you can find us on our website at chemistconfessions.com. You can email us at info at chemistconfessions. You can, dot com. You can also <laughs> DM us at Instagram at chemist.confessions. And we will see you next week. It will be all about cleanser science oh boy all right and uh, for now that's it we'll see you guys soon bye, bye. bye.